say definitively that religions are all bullshit. Welcome to Brainstorm. We have the explicit tag for a reason. This is a base level argument to a higher level morality. I get paid to science? Two science as much as one can science. What the hell was my point? Trigger warning. The Brainstorm podcast will criticize your most cherished beliefs. We attack nonsense in all its forms and discuss difficult subjects. Hi and welcome to the Brainstorm Podcast, Skeptic Studio, where we do interviews, major topics, and news related to skepticism and atheism. I'm Corey, and my panel tonight are Destin. Hey. Angela. Hello. Leo. Hey there. And Renee. Hello. With the always amazing Dave doing sound. That's me. We're here in Roman Empire Studios in Regina, Saskatchewan, and today is October 14th, 2016. The Skeptic Studio is brought to you by Reasonist Inc., atheist, skeptic, and science-based apparel. You can find them at reasonistinc.com. Tonight's guest is Kavin Senapathy. She is an author, speaker, and science activist who writes about health, medicine, genomics, agriculture, and food. She's the co-executive director of the international movement March Against Myths and co-author of The Fear Babe, Shattering Vanny Harry's Glass House. She's also a regular contrib- contributor to Forbes and the Genetic Literacy Project. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Thanks for having me, guys. I hope I pronounced your name right. <laughs> yes, it is far closer than a lot of people get. My name is Coven Synopathy. Coven Synopathy. A little softer. My first I... <laughs> name um, rhymes with oven. It's pretty much pronounced coven like a group of witches okay cool okay. you're a group of witches <laughs> yes i am awesome <laughs> we can never had one, one of those the on the podcast before <laughs> yeah check group of witches Neat. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> twofer <laughs> right on so i guess we might as well start uh with a little bit about you and how you got into the skeptical movement and science uh, journalism, I guess? Right. So um, I've always been into communication and I've always been into science. Um, I grew up with an atheist dad, although I was so very rebellious that I call myself an agnostic. I'm sorry, you guys. (laughs) I just just had to. Um, But... I, I really got into the skeptics movement, especially when it comes to um, science activism, when I became a mom. Um, my older child is five years old, and then I was also have a three-year-old. And I realized that so much of the marketing and the kind of woo movement is targeted to parents and, and um, kind of it almost exploits a parent's fear of of not doing the best by their children. And so around when my son was like a baby, less than one year old, I started writing for evidence-based parenting site, Grounded Parents. And that sort of started my journey in, of documenting my my own learning about a lot of these issues. That's cool. Sweet. So uh, I guess, are you part of the Science Moms group? I am. So Science Moms is a documentary which will be released in early of 2017. But the Science Moms movie, which is produced by Natalie and Brian Newell, was actually inspired by a letter that a group of moms and myself wrote and then and other science moms and dads signed on to um, when we realized that there was a group of celebrity moms who were, who were expressing publicly their views against genetic engineering, what they call GMOs. Mm -hmm. And so we called on these celebrity moms to judge genetic engineering 
with science and not based on fear and hype. And that letter inspired these filmmakers to make this film called Science Moms, which is essentially about parents who raise their children based on science and and facts rather than fear and hype. Which which is what we like to consider properly raising kids. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's correct. I guess I guess we do our best. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And three of us are parents here too, so Yes. Oh yay. Four four of us. <laughs> or not. Four of us. Four, well, well my parents are Dave, or right? my kids right. are in bed and the parents are all up. It's Friday night here, so Yeah. I'm the bad dad. My kids are at home alone. They're six <laughs> and four. <laughs> <laughs> they'll six. they'll manage. Six. They'll be fine. If they're alive they're when I get home. Good enough. They'll bake you cookies. He, he made really sure fine. that the bowls were full of food and water. <laughs> litter boxes were clean. That's how you parent. That's all right? you need. That's all you need. Yeah. They'll, they'll live. Exactly. Good thing this isn't being recorded or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing this is not broadcast. Yeah. Live. No, yeah. And that this doesn't hold up in court either. So. Yeah, it's not legally We didn't put the sarcasm uh, warning out <laughs> yeah. yet, have we? No. I, th- I think our show's always the- got the sarcasm warning. <laughs> It's just plausible denial like Trump. I never said yeah. that. I never said yeah. it. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. So I guess uh, uh, you were part of forming the Mar- uh, March Against Myths movement. Uh, so how did that start? Right. So I'm one of the three <clears throat> co-founders and directors of March Against Myths. And... Essentially, what it what the group is, it's a grassroots movement that opposes pseudoscience injustice. And so there's this misconception that anyone who, who um, opposes pseudoscience or science denialists are in it um, because of capitalist skepticism, which I think is, is great and has its place, or in it because of truth or science. But... What a lot of <laughs> there's this there's this myth that uh, pro GMO folks are conservative and and pro corporation, whereas anti GMO folks are for the people. But really, March Against Myths is about opposing pseudoscience injustice. So we're about promoting the truth and standing for science um, in the name of justice. We, we like to highlight that the anti-GMO lobby or the anti-vaccine lobby and all those other lobbies hurt people, hurt environment and hurt the environment and hurt farmers, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's what March Against Myths is about right now. But we started essentially as a counter protest against a group called March Against Monsanto, which some people may be yes. familiar with. Yes. March Against Monsanto started out as an anti-GMO group, anti-agribusiness um, group, but has since ballooned into all kinds of conspiracy theories. They believe in chemtrails. They believe in um, cancer being a man-made disease. Oh. They're anti-vaccine. I mean, any of those they, they've they've promoted a moon landing denier um and, and published <laughs> oh some of his some of his work and so we 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 actually go out on the street i mean one of one of our mottos is taking science to the streets and we actually went and counter protested two years in a row these international march against monsanto um rallies and so and that's who we are i mean you see us wearing green shirts wearing i heart gmos t-shirts and telling the truth but more importantly explaining how denial of the truth hurts people and causes injustice Mm -hmm. wow i gotta get me one of those i heart gm shirts me too oh we we do have a (laughs) where do you get so there's also this misconception that we're funded by by big business we're not the only funding we have is from periodic um t-shirt campaigns and so t-shirts we will make them available for a couple of weeks at a time every couple of months. And right now you can get your I Heart GMO shirt. Oh, okay. Just go to Facebook.com slash mammoths, M-A-M-Y-T-H-S, and you will find the details. You can get them for about another week. Well, Corey will take notes and put that right into the website. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. I love volunteering <laughs> for all this stuff. I've already got most of this stuff. Good. Because I'm ahead of the game. Good, good. 
Um, I was just thinking he's a t-shirt fiend, so that's yeah. Why. Well, we, we, yeah, 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 a lot of us are. Uh, one big question I had is, how much does Big Science pay you directly? <laughs> Directly, and does it come as, um, in a check I mean, or? you would not believe the number of zeros behind that figure. It's <laughs> zero, There's zero, so zero, many that it starts zero, with zero, a zero. zero yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's quite a lot of zeros. Mm. Um, no, I mean, t- to be honest, I am a writer and a, and a speaker. I got into this. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a privileged person. I have my husband's an accountant. I mean, we're we're fairly comfortable. We're not wealthy by any means we're we're sort of middle class so Mm -hmm. um i I really care about this stuff um i'm i'm a speaker and a writer and i am paid by the publications that i write for i'm paid to to do my talks but the bottom line is nobody pays me to say what i say um i would never say anything against against my beliefs for for money I started for the first couple of years writing straight up for free, um, Grounded Parents, the evidence-based skeptical parenting site that I write for, never was paid a cent, wrote for them for free couple, for a couple of years. I happened to strike a chord with a lot of people when I was writing for them enough so that um, other sites wanted to pay me to, to write or to, or other entities wanted to pay me to speak. And so... Um, yeah, t- to answer your question, how much does big science pay me directly? <laughs> zero point zero, 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 repeating. Directly. <laughs> zero. So, if, there was, if, there was this, if there was this entity called big science and they, they wanted to pay me, I wouldn't necessarily turn them down. But, um, oh, compare, my ha- compare my house with the food babes and, I mean, oh, come on, yeah. you're going to see the difference. Yeah. Right. I just decided I need to start hers a company. Is very, his, hers is very lavish, to say the least, uh, as far uh, as I know. Oh, gosh. I need to start a company called Big Science. Please, and will you pay me? <laughs> I mean, I'll be very be transparent about it. Yeah. <laughs> Paid for by big science. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. So the anti-GMO movement and I guess the pro-GMO, whatever you may call it, True. has has been has been really politicized and kind of mixed in with environmentalism. And how do you think, or in in, in your view, how can we go about trying to separate those more from political ideologies where? You have people dogmatically following, you know, well, since I am, I am like a hardcore leftist hippie, I must oppose GMOs without understanding anything because it has kind of become like you, like you said before that normally conservative farmers, they're the ones that are pro GMO and then, but it shouldn't be a political thing. Right. Um, this, this has come up a lot in, in my work and in my, um, discussions and my outreach i mean um i'm <laughs> i'm a very leftist as well but um over the, the last couple of years i've made good friends who happen to be conservative farmers or happen to be um otherwise conservative but um i've spoken to to left-wing folks who are anti-gmo and they're absolutely shocked that that so many of my colleagues and i are are liberal and progressive and 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 they just can't believe it and so it's absolutely not political and i would also add that i have friends who work for monsanto and who work for bayer and who work for some of these big companies but i was jokingly called a shill for tiny agro and in, in another <laughs> in another on another podcast because that's funny um yeah i mean it, it's it's true <laughs> What what most people don't realize is that the anti-GMO lobby or the anti-quote Monsanto lobby, and I say quote because um, a lot of these folks use Monsanto as a sort of scapegoat to symbolize all of the perceived ills of the food system. Many of the perceived ills um, are true. Some are some are not are not true are not accurate, um, but but really. The opposition to GMOs creates an unscientific, arbitrary, regulatory quagmire that prevents the smaller players from participating. So it stifles innovation and it stifles competition. And it, and it, 
essentially creates a clear path for the big companies to monopolize these technologies. And what I'm for, um, above and beyond all else, is to allow these technologies to be in the hands of, of everyone, of small companies, big companies, academia, in order to fight the or combat the agricultural problems we have so that we can benefit, benefit the farmers, the needy, the environment, and the consumer. That's, that is, bottom line, what I stand for. For our listeners, where are you? Madison, Wisconsin, USA. Yep. So... Not that far south from you. It's pretty cold. <laughs> it's cold here Good too. Old, old it's not October. that bad. But. Yeah, one of, one of our uh, one of our co-hosts who hasn't been on in quite a while actually works for Bear Crop Science. So. Oh, are they not here today? No, no, she's no. not here today. She hasn't okay. been on in a while. Actually, she's kind of busy this time of year. She lives far away. That too. Oh, like, at least two hours. Well, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I know your listeners can't see it, but I see you guys all together, and you have candy and <laughs> drinks, and yes. I feel like I wish I was there with you. <laughs> Usually there's more you alcohol, You are welcome too, anytime. But... I have yeah. a glass of wine right now. Perfect. So. That works. Yes. And I do have a friend visiting me from northern Wisconsin who was even closer um, well, that's pretty uh, far north there, eh? to you, but I know she's in southern Wisconsin with me, but she's hanging out with my husband while I talk to you guys. So nice of you to talk to us. That's cool. <laughs> so oh, how, busy you know, when you have guests and extra children and everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's just my life. <laughs> I'll, I'll, see, I'm letting them handle the kids while I get to hang out with, there with you, you guys. Yes. Yes. There you go. I win. <laughs> Way to win situation. Yes. I. I, I guess. Have, sorry, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> I was. It was off the cuff. I. Uh, you go. I was just gonna say, like, we kind of are talking about the GMOs a little bit, and you just recently wrote an article on the, the so-called GMO Monsanto Tribunal. Oh, yes. And uh, kind of what a joke that is. Right. So there's this... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of just <laughs> highlight it for you, but... So they this was announced about a year ago, and my strong suspicion, I can't confirm it, but, I mean, it's it's pretty much happening is this group announced their Monsanto tribunal about a year ago. And it's largely because of fundraising. The Monsanto tribunal, um, uses some, some UN rules, guiding principles of on business and human rights adopted in the UN in, in 2011. And they're using these guiding principles to, legitimize their their trial their tribunal against monsanto for crimes against humanity and monsanto is in quotes because when you look at what this group of anti-gmo leaders opposes is it isn't monsanto at all it's modern agricultural technologies and the reason that a, a lot of these people oppose modern agricultural technologies is and this is going to sound like a conspiracy theory coming from me, but it's not. They have financial connections to um, certain industries that prohibit genetic engineering. Um, for example, the organic industry. The Organic Consumers Association is very closely associated with this Monsanto tribunal. Um, and so they're they're putting Monsanto on trial quote, trial for crimes against humanity, they've raised close to 400,000 euros with, with matching donations from people like Joseph Mercola, who, of who I'm sure you're familiar with, yes. um, <laughs> Dr. Bronner's, the, the soap mogul, <laughs> yes. and others opposing Monsanto, saying that Monsanto is patenting life and that this is awful, um, let alone the fact that nearly... All of the food we eat has been genetically altered beyond any recognition from its indigenous ancestors, number one. And number two, that nearly all all of the crops that our food is derived from are patented. Even organic varieties um, or varieties that can be grown mm. as organic. I mean, I could just keep, keep <laughs> going on and on about this, but it's such a messed up situation, which... 
you know, it, it, it's just, it's, it, I, I mean, I can't. It's one of these things that makes an eloquent person like me yeah. speechless when I'm just talking off the cuff that it's, it's a gish gallop. There's, really? there's so much to address here. Yeah. It's going on right now. We'll probably write a follow-up piece that you can right. check out. But Sweet. this Monsanto tribunal is essentially a group of people using Monsanto as a, sc- a scapegoat for all for everything that they find wrong with the food system and everything that the public doesn't understand about the food system um, and everything that can help line their pockets when they demonize these <laughs> these various practices and technologies. So speaking of Monsanto, I, I have a uh, I guess a two part question, but so there there is a sort of monopoly going on in the in the genetically modified field, like the biotech. Is that is that at all an issue that some just a couple of large companies have the capability to do most of this research and make most of the money? And part two of that question, is it a legitimate kind of a proposal that the government should invest more in in developing these kinds of biotechnologies? Right, absolutely. So to answer part one of your question, yes. So larger companies, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily call it a monopoly, but they, they do have the, they, they, they control largely this, this GMO market. Uh, there, there are some exceptions like Okanagan Specialty Fruits, who are the creators of the non-browning Arctic apple, and um, and a company that created a non-browning potato, the white russet potato, um, also known as the innate potato. But the reason the reason for this, I would argue, is that again the anti-GMO lobby creates. Um, a, a regulatory framework based largely on ideology rather than science, which makes it prohibitively expensive and difficult for other other participants to to use these technologies and actually bring them to market. And um, and what was part two again? The if the government should in, do more to invest in biotech right. and make it free or so you know, invest. Investment is absolutely important, yes, but again, um, the government also needs to start basing their regulations on science rather than ideology. And again, I am I am all for government and for regulations, but when it comes to genetic engineering, um, the the regulatory framework has been completely based on ideology and not on facts. <laughs> good, good answer. Well done. Nice. That was well said. One thing I've noticed a lot, um, I take my son with me grocery shopping whenever I can. He's six. And um, I point out to him. And I, I may be a little gruff and maybe, <laughs> maybe. May, maybe I'm not um, delicate when I'm talking in public. But I'll see somebody grab like organic rose salt. <laughs> and I'll say to Loki, now see that, that's salt. Salt is not organic, so there cannot be an all organic variety of it. <laughs> or, or walking by and people are buying organic cauliflower, right, which, which, is, which is derived from mustard. <laughs> and, I, and I explain that to Loki, maybe loud enough for people to hear and maybe get a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and what, what I'm Poking trying to say is... the bear and safe. No. Yep. There isn't enough critical thought by anybody. If people were, would critically think about anything or everything, <laughs> then you wouldn't have people um, saying the vaccines cause autism. You wouldn't have people saying that GMOs are the devil when everything we eat, eat has been modified, <laughs> right? Um, if, if people did some thinking and some research, I, I, I think that's the biggest, the biggest problem facing the world right now is that nobody does any actual thinking or research, so. That's, that's all I had. I, uh, it made me think of uh, me and Sirik went to the grocery store the other day, and Coca Cola now has a all natural yeah. Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah. I heard about that. Instead of supernatural, I totally wrote about that a couple months ago. Did you? Yeah, it's I got did. a green yeah. label and everything, and I just said, "Now the this bottle, label. this is bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, There's it no... is all natural. <laughs> well, yeah, because it exists, right. but it means nothing. Right. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a meaningless term. But, but is it actually entirely sweetened by by stevia or whatever it's called, or is it just part, like just a little part of it? I haven't actually I, looked into yeah, it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. know I tried. Sure, I actually bought it and I tried it and t- it tastes, tastes like same? it's got tastes like it's got aspartame in it to me. Like, oh, okay, like, like Diet oh. Coke. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I guess we're talking about food, <laughs> so we could talk about the food babe a little bit. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, why? Sorry. Well, Coven and I know. Co- I know. company wrote a uh, book a- a- addressing many of her things. So uh, I guess why don't you tell us a little bit about your book? <laughs> yes, we did address many of her things. Um, <laughs> and talking about going to the grocery store, I'm always the one with my kids at the grocery store where they'll point at things and I'll be like, baby, kind of kind of a little more loudly than I need to. We don't buy organic. We don't waste our money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> but back to the, back to the book. Um, so the, the book is called The Fear Babe, Shattering Bonnie Hart's Glass House. And... Uh, it's gotten quite a good reception, but others would ask, you know, why well, spend 400 pages on Vani Hari? Mm-hmm. And and our answer to that is that the book isn't really about Vani Hari, Vani the food babe Hari. What right. it does is it uses Vani Hari, who is arguably one of the most popular misinformation vectors of our time Mm -hmm. when it comes to food and health. It uses her as a framework to discuss and um, debunk not only some of the most popular food myths, but to explain why these food myths continue to proliferate, proliferate, excuse me, despite mountains of evidence against them. And so that's what this book essentially is. The fear babe uses the food babe because she kind of runs the gamut of all these food myths to Mm -hmm. to discuss them and and why they're so popular, why these myths are so popular, as well as how pressure from these ideological parties like the food babe army can have influence on policy when it comes to um, corporations deciding to drop certain ingredients or yeah. preservatives, even though they may be very well beneficial because consumers are bullying them into yeah. into dropping what I call some of the, the big P's, like preservatives and pesticides, just because they don't like them and they're afraid of them. Yeah. Well, who wants their food to be, you know, stable and edible? Yeah, why would you want that? <laughs> Uh-oh. That didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> okay. I tried to be smooth. <laughs> I tried to change your That didn't work didn't at work. all. No. Okay, That's keep right. going. No, yeah, like why would you want I thought you there was a conspiracy. Food? Somebody was shutting her down or something. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Big I mean, she's even gone after beer. and Oh, yeah, yeah. the caramel color. Beer. She's gone after candy. She's gone after bread, Subway. I mean, all these, yeah. these companies... Um, I mean Starbucks. Right now, she's after Jello. I mean, what? Well, I, Jello. I, I didn't realize Why? she I mean, was still around. Well, I, 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 I hate to say, I hate to say that there are bigger problems out there because that sounds a little bit privileged. But Jello. But I, I love <laughs> my <laughs> bone marrow. It's mm. so good, bone marrow. My you, stepson you, loves you, Jello so hard. He he just he, he'll eat like four of those a day. They're quite good. Like, but, yeah, I, yeah, I do like it. But do you think she actually <laughs> believes do do? that, like, the things that she writes about or says? Or do you think that she, to a large extent, just knows that there's an audience who will swallow that, you know, <laughs> as it comes out? And she sees an opportunity to sell books and whatever she does. Is she Dr. Oz? But do you well, think- right. I mean, that's so funny that you brought it up, Dr. Oz, because as soon as this, this question, before you even finish asking the question, I was going to say it's a great question and it applies not only to Vani Hari, but it applies to the Dr.'s Oz, it applies to the Mercolas, it applies to yeah. all of these quacks. David Avocado and Wolf. <laughs> I would say that I can't, I can't generalize in, 
or I can't quantify, I was going to answer for Vani, but overall I would say they're, you know, about half disingenuous. Um, they, they started out believing, believing what they said. And then they realized that there was a market for it mm-hmm. and they kind of fell down that rabbit hole. So now even if they don't believe it anymore, they can't backtrack. They got to keep going. Right? Apparently they got a big McMansion to yes. pay for. So. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I do have some as, as a reporter, I, I won't report on anything until I'm certain of it, but I will say that I do have some good evidence of these people admitting that they don't fully believe what they espouse. Yeah. I find it, it, it hard to imagine that they have, that they actually believe all of it. It, it seems just unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask, do you ever run into people that are like, oh, I can't believe they're anti-GMO and that they think vaccines cause, cause autism. Oh, that pisses me off. You know? Oh, I'm going to go get some acupuncture and just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you ever, do you ever get stuff like that? <laughs> Where they, they, they don't believe in woo and they're so... And then they they say something stupidly woo or they go and Well, everybody kind of... I'd say that most people... the even the best critical thinkers have their pet woo, you know? I agree with it, that. It, it, that just is, I, I wouldn't say that I don't have my pet woo or that I haven't fallen for woo in the past and then realized, oh, wait, I was wrong. And and, and I'm going to admit this to you straight up. Um, I, I Like I said, I wasn't part of the skeptics movement until maybe five five years ago, close to six years ago now that my daughter was born. I, I, I always fancied myself a critical thinker. Mm-hmm. But maybe about five years ago it was, I was watching Dr. Oz and saw him promoting raspberry ketones as a supplement. <laughs> and I totally bought those. I bought them <laughs> and I took them. I, I'm telling you now, I did. <laughs> I, I have purchased and consumed nearly every bodybuilding supplement on the market. So <laughs> let's go around the circle and admit the things that we did. That I I was I had I paid a doula when I was pregnant. <gasps> see, but, there you go. See, I I don't think it, it's I I disagree that it's a hundred percent wooful. I don't know, <laughs> but I will. I don't know if I want to go too far down this rabbit hole but um she was a, a hypnobirthing practitioner are you familiar with that yes hippo <laughs> hypnobirthing oh hypno Hip- hippo. I, thought you said hippo. Not- hippo I was almost the size of a hippo but no not you like how do you practice birthing hippos <laughs> That, that, that's where i was stuck yes. sorry I, I apologize for derailing okay. that sorry but but that's that's a dangerous I think that's that was kind of like my skepticism came after my daughter was born too, like four years ago. And the hypnobirthing was, was okay in some ways because it kind of forces you to to not really focus on your pain. It's like mind over matter kind of thing. <laughs> and and <laughs> but but during the whole process I didn't want to listen to to guided meditation on the fucking ghetto blaster. I wanted to listen <laughs> to the playlist that I made. So it was I don't know. That was that was the woo part, the guided meditation. It was a bit frustrating. But she she did recommend a supplement that I think I took before oh, yeah. I gave birth. Was it placenta? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I almost okay. bought into that. I almost did. I'll uh, admit that too. Uh, it's, it, it's so it's many of us delicious. come so close. Like it's I so look back to the things though. that I considered and I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't, but I don't necessarily condemn people who did fall yeah. for it. It's yeah. especially as women. Yeah. Um, it's all, it's especially so as women who are giving birth and, and, now having these children to deal with, we're we're kind of yeah. reduced to our bodies in such an animalistic way that yeah, it's it's unreal. It's unreal, and that's where a lot of the woo begins. Yeah, a, a lot of the woo is begins and takes root 
when women have kids, and that's where it spreads. Because there's it's there's a vulnerability. Alarming. There. Yeah. Well, you're, and, and you're for vulnerable men, vulnerable when you're giving birth and your legs are wide open and you're being <laughs> stitched up or whatever. Like. Yep. That, you don't that have seems to like a pretty vulnerable <laughs> position. So, yeah. so you guys tell me not to talk about e- or dead baby jokes or how many asking the percuss- the, the the person when interviewing how many babies eat. Now you're talking about placenta and, and <laughs> getting ripped different. open and stitched That's up. That's different. It's, it's, totally. it's very different coming. Yeah. Okay. Very, it's very, very, very different. different. <laughs> real experience, <laughs> not... My child is still oh, yeah, alive. Real, real experience. <laughs> but yeah. speaking of the shill accusations, which I think <laughs> came up earlier, I mean, people have told me that my babies are... My kids are fake. I mean, like, I'm such <laughs> a perfect kids? shill that I'm a bot and that <gasps> my children are these perfect props. Wow. Man, I, I, I a... Like, I'm a fake oh. mom. Not only is my name fake, I'm also a fake mother with prop kids. Man, I have and a real ha- kid. I have a real kid. Why children? would you want fake ones? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's It, it happens, and I'm like... Every now and then, I'd like to give them back, and then like <laughs> have them for a little yeah. bit, and then and then you can give them back to me. Yes. But alas, alas, they're mine. Yeah. <laughs> put, them, put them in storage. <laughs> yeah, put them in storage. Uh, my my pet woo back in the day back was back to the kid uh, library. <laughs> was um, chiropractor, and I think uh, as as an aside from. From what you guys did with with childbirth and all, anything to take away from the pain and the fear, yeah. Uh, with men, because and, and we've been over the whole, uh, we, we've been raised to just take it and go back to work and don't complain and whatever. That I think men buy into the the health woo um, stuff that that can keep them away from the hospital and keep them away from doctors, like like going to a chiropractor instead of because chiropractors are bullshit. Yeah, I, I hope none of you listen to our show. If you do, <laughs> I would love to have you on the show and tell you why you're bullshit. Um, but but we, we'll go to chiropractors instead of actually going to doctors because you can't go to a physical therapist without going to a doctor and getting prescribed, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think I think it's there are parallels there for sure. Well, you can. You just have to pay yeah. more. And most of the woo right. feeds on most of that kind of woo feeds on fear. Well, or any woo. Yeah. Really. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. That, 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 that silence here's, fills the here's room. Here's the bottom line: it's that it's that common denominator. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. besides food and uh, GMOs, do you have a, a favorite woo that you deal with on a regular basis? Oh gosh, a favorite! You're making me pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Something that sure. bugs you just more than everything else. I mean, more broadly, there's this this term that mm. I'm sure that. That you're familiar with natural the natural uh, yes. um it applies across the board it applies to parenting you know the mm-hmm. natural mom the natural birth the natural um breastfeeding the natural food the natural medicine the natural cancer treatment and so yes. yeah i would say that the natural woo is my across the board one that i fight and when it, when it comes to food again um there's this misconception that heirloom or organic is natural in this this indigenous way of eating and growing food, mm-hmm. whereas most people realize that absolutely nothing we eat has not been genetically altered beyond recognition from its from its ancestors. And so, yeah, I mean, short answer to your question: natural. <laughs> I specifically hate the word. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's something I've always found funny is that for some reason people equate natural with good, even or better. Though, yeah. or better mm-hmm. Even though nature is generally out trying to fucking kill you. <laughs> nature will kill you. I'm not sure if if you see you. You guys brought up Science Moms earlier, but there's the there's a trailer from Science Moms. If you guys go to the Science Moms page or um, Vimeo or something, there's a trailer, and there's me. <laughs> Like, there's a short few seconds of it where I'm like, nature will kill you really quickly. (laughs) It's actively trying to do it. Yes. So how how do we get to see Science Moms? Like, is it going to be available on Vimeo or could we, like, bring it here somehow? I think you can bring it. Um, So it'll be out in early 2017. Okay. You would have to ask the 
producer, the filmmaker, Natalie Newell. She's got a page, Science Moms, on Facebook. You can find it there. Um, but I believe it's going to be publicly available and that you won't have to go to go to a local screening in order okay. to see it. I think that their, their primary, primary goal is to get the message out okay. um, rather than profit, which is kind of similar with to my book, The Fear Babe, um, so many people ask me why, you know, why would you write, spend time writing and publishing a book unless somebody was paying you to do it? I'm like, legit. I really just want people <laughs> to, to get this message. Yes. Believe me if you want or don't. <laughs> it's what they paid her not to write. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I'm sure both will be available at piratebay.org. <laughs> maybe. Very well, maybe. maybe I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, the the part of the book that I'm up to is uh, the caramel coloring portion. Uh, but I kind of have trouble reading books, so I've been hoping that it would come out on audiobook. Yeah, that that was <laughs> that was a possibility that we've been exploring, but it's a, it's a long book, and like I said. Uh, You know, we should do the audiobook. We've, we've been talking about <laughs> yeah. we've been talking about it. We're gonna do a paperback for for sure, but now that you bring it up, maybe <laughs> we'll really get around to that audiobook thing. Well, well I, I was gonna read it, one, but you know, so. I'm not like I don't have that voice, you know, for audiobook reading. I'll do and it. so I'll there totally was do guy, it. We, we have two right here. We have Ange and Dave. I'll totally read your book for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, will you read it? Cause yeah. I'm not even kidding. I mean, people read my work and then they talk to me and they're like, that's how you sound. You sound like a ditz. But that's <laughs> fine. I can totally do it. But my co-authors are not willing to. There's one audiobook dude that is is like a renowned audiobook guy um, that has been willing to do it. Maybe, we'll, maybe we will we'll actually do it. I didn't realize there was a demand. Uh, Lots of people <laughs> like to... like. I audiobooks and podcasts are the mm-hmm. best thing, especially when you're like stuck at home with a kid who loves TV and stuff, and you like yeah. you can only handle so much daytime shitty TV and oh, only so you much. Hold it in your hand no, no. It? it's on paper. No, Jesus. that is totally how my husband People. is too. Jesus. He'll just like sit here and list, sit there. My husband, this is this is a totally tangential thing, but he's an accountant. <laughs> And he's so weird. He can fully do a day of work and listen to podcasts at the same time. And he will come home and encyclopedia me where he's yes. like, I had a full day of being an accountant. And here's all the stuff I learned. My husband does the same thing. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. See, that is goals. No, 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 no. Yes. I have a job. Oh. I'm, actually, I'm actually at my job 9 to 12 hours a day. I just don't do any work. <laughs> yeah. Most of my time is spent online playing games. True confession. Which is why he doesn't do his homework for the podcast. And I hope Gunny's I mean, boss really doesn't listen to this. Yes. She doesn't. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I'll totally read your book for you. Okay. No, <laughs> we're getting in touch. All right. Please. I totally, I sent you a friend request on Facebook. Yay. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go accept it right now. <laughs> Why not? Can you send me yep. one? For sure. Wait, did you follow me on my public page or on my personal? I can't. I, I don't, I don't remember. I think Corey's a mutual oh. friend too. Did so. you hit like? Oh, okay. Corey's a mutual friend. Okay, I will accept. <laughs> yeah. We're just live like on the radio, I, live, live social media, sure. boom, 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 for sure. <laughs> I'm, awesome. I'm liking all, all the. I'm things. gonna check I'm like my Twitter account now. Uh, <laughs> and, well, I, I have a legit question. While, oh yeah, while, while, there we go. While Maybe we do this, yeah. Yeah. Well, is, it, is it a natural question? <laughs> it's a natural question. It came naturally. It's totally organic. Uh, so, it's an organic do question. you get points where you just see another like bullshit post and you just? face palm and say you do not want to read that shit or or do you are you always excited to read another crazy story <laughs> about some person who just made I know how that's full of shit <laughs> um 
I want it. I, I would love to say that I'm excited every time, <laughs> but I'm only human. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when there's a fundamentally new BS claim being made and it's by someone who we can tell is going to reach um, reach a significant number number of people, then I don't get, I wouldn't say excited per se, but I will go after that and do my best to present, present good information on it. Mm-hmm. But some of these, some of these BS claims are just so recycled and so cyclical that it does get, it does get tiring, even though I don't want it to. And fortunately I can just kind of, throw out something I've already written or already done or one of my great colleagues or another great um, woo fighter or science communicator has done. And there's, there's so much great material out there yeah. Yeah. That, that, that that's what, what kind of keeps me going. But yeah, I mean, every now and then when you, when you see something like, Oh, cancer is just a man-made disease and you can cure it with baking soda. And you see that however many times and you're just in the wrong mood. You're like, God, you know, I, <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> I really wish Facebook had a way that you can post verbally. I'm still waiting yeah. for the middle finger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I but, want uh, the, the sick throwing up face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> when, when I see those posts that I've argued like 200 times and I'm just sick of them, I'm actually usually more excited for the comments underneath. I always look, look at the comments. Yeah. What I try to remember is I have a few rules of thumb that I play by, um, and those are still evolving, but w- when one of these claims come up, I try to remember that the most important thing is that fence sitter middle ground observer like the person that never comments but is just kind of watching the conversation yes those are the people that are important and yes i just keep them in mind well a lot of people that like or comment um even people that comment or could be completely ignorant of it and starting off by insulting them or anything is just starting off in a derogatory way is not going to benefit anybody right Still, exactly. though, it's, it's well, you hard wait, not you wait to until sometimes. they insult you, and then you rip the shit out of them <laughs> and lay them, let them just bleed out. Yeah, because sometimes it's really hard to be the civil one. Yeah. After the thousandth time of yeah. watching yeah, I'm, this I'm just bullshit. always amazed at how much, like, with a lot of this stuff, there's so much actual science out there if you look for it. But yet it's the same bullshit over and over and over and over and over and over and over, that, and over again. That's like what I was saying. It's, yeah. it, if people it's would just critically think, <laughs> then none of this shit would... It, yeah. our, our, our podcast would be extremely boring. It wouldn't exist. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> in, in the Woo report, there's nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> music. <laughs> Their music. Yeah. Somehow I think we'd still have things to say. Oh, yeah. I'll never, I'll never shut up. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> nice. So uh, what do you have in, uh, in store for future projects that are going to be coming out? Any, any, any big works you're considering? No, just a lot of little works. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I just do what I do. Every now and then um, projects come up. But definitely March Against Myths has has some ongoing work in the pipeline. I mean, we, we, we always like to infiltrate some of the talks and, and presentations and uh, kind of theatrics of, of anti-science, science, science denialists. And we're going to try to show up to, to some of their events and live tweet them and and kind of expose how their misinformation is is harming people so that's always in the pipeline um and yeah i mean i i write very regularly so several articles a month on on this beat of science denial and 
I just, I mean, I just keep going and then tr try to do my best to expose the misinformation out there. And I, 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 I like to think of it as a misinformation hydra, right? No matter what, no matter what we debunk, a new one is always going to come up. So every head you cut off, yeah. two more come up. Yeah. Right, you, you <laughs> cut them off, two more come up. So my, I, I always want to de to debunk this misinformation. But my underlying goal is always to arm people with a misinformation radar so that they can learn how to spot this this stuff as it comes at them. It's interesting. Actually, Forbes has become kind of a, a really good resource for debunking or like for science based information. I I never originally would have thought of it that way, but it sort of has become this entity where you can go for good information. Well, that's right. one question I had actually directly about Forbes. Uh, I've subscribed to Forbes for years now. And one question I've always wanted to ask somebody that writes for them is, do they have an actual editor that reads things before they get published? And Right. Oh, go because ahead. Because there's always so many gross, huge spelling errors and, and stuff <laughs> that are just, just blatant right in front of your face, even in titles. That it, it's, And I'm, I'm, I'm by no means a grammar Nazi. <laughs> Except I, I'm totally a grammar. The pedant totally of the bunch. Um, but um, it, if, if if there was an error in, in your writing that was like just huge, and somebody commented on it in the comment section, would would you ever see it? Would you care? <laughs> not, yeah. Not, not that I have thirty of them waiting to send you right now. I don't. <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> well to answer you yes send them to me um uh it, so when it comes to forbes I, I can't speak for them because i'm essentially my agreement with them is i'm kind of a freelancer who has a regular uh i i contribute to forbes and i have a contract with them but um it depends who you're speaking to if it's a magazine writer or a staff member or a contributor um not anyone can be a contributor like I am. Um, I do have an editor and a, and a producer, and um, I'm not familiar with these spelling errors and headlines. <laughs> well, but, yeah, uh, you probably don't make if, them. If but... one of my headlines has a spelling error, tell me, and I assure you I'll fix it in, like, a minute <laughs> because that would be super embarrassing. Uh, yeah, no, there there are people that are that are looking at the work. It's not like... I don't know what what do you call it? like CNN I report where like anybody can just post right. conspiracy yes. theories and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a, a quite solid vetting process. I'm very happy with with the platform that I have there. Uh, they 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 are um, hosting more more and more science based and good information. And I'm very, I'm very pleased with it. Um, people see it as a as a business magazine. I've gotten a lot of accusations, like, "Well, of course you write for Forbes." I mean, Monsanto's just paying them off to say, what, you know, <laughs> yeah. say whatever they want, and Big Pharma and and Mark, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, you know, I, I as a Forbes contributor, I I essentially have the the freedom to write anything I want to and cover anything I want to cover within my beat and within my subject matter. And, and that's great. Um, and whether or not I agree with my editor, or my producer politically, they, they most certainly support the work that I do. And I think that's great. That's cool. Awesome. That you have that For system. Sure. That's good. Anybody got anything else? Well, I was just—I was just thinking, like when I was talking to my roommate about talking talking to you about uh, you know this this subject. One of the things she brought up, and I'm wondering what you think of. Well, I guess it all feeds into like the food babe and David Avocado Wolf or whatever. Like she was talking about, you know, the rising rising of ADD and stuff like that, and she was trying to connect it to GMOs. Do you think it's just lay people making, you know, causation? You know, yeah, correlation, what, correlation, causation errors, and that's how it keeps feeding this fear spiral, shall we say? Right. I think that's part of it. the The correlation and causation errors that correlation does not equal causation. 
But I also think it's a, a much more fundamental kind of visceral visceral reaction in that there there are certain things that scare us, right? Yeah. So ADHD, autism, cancer, all of these things scare us and it's easier and it's more comforting to us to be able to blame yes. a small number of scapegoats. So whether it be GMOs or something unnatural or artificial coloring, if we can say, oh, okay, <clears throat> you know, autism, Alzheimer's, diabetes, cancer can be blamed on these things, then okay, it's easy. We can just demonize these things and get rid of them. And then maybe we can give ourselves a um, an illusion of control. Whereas yeah. really these are complex disorders that have many causes, multifaceted causes, um, genetic causes, environmental causes. And when it comes to genetics, it's multiple loci across, across our genome. And that's scary. And so if we can just blame a couple things here and there and decide to remove them from our diets or from our lives, then maybe we can really feel better about, about how the world may or may not harm us and, yeah. And, and just feel like we're more in control. Yeah. Well, my six-year-old's autistic. And um, I do get people into my office once in a while. And I have a picture of him and my wife. And they're like, oh, how old's your kid? Six. Oh, what's, what grade is he in? Grade one just started. He's a bit behind because he's on the spectrum. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then they, they'll start talking. Some of them start going off on Monsanto and GMOs and, and um, vaccines. And they're like, well, you know, back when I was a kid in the 50s and 60s, you know, there weren't this many cases of autism. I'm like, there weren't any cases of autism. It wasn't a diagnosis then. Right. Yeah. But there were, there were the same percentage of people that had it. They just weren't diagnosed with it. So it's, yeah, it just drives me fucking insane. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah. Um so I guess that'll be all we have for you tonight. Uh, Any questions you, for us before you go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> now what, they interview me. What's Maynard's? Yeah. Yeah. And, and she's like, who are these guys again? Yeah. What did they do? What's Is that delicious show? candy? Is that mango? Have you ever? If these are fuzzy peaches. Do you have those there? We don't have <gasps> them. We have what? Skittles, and then I'm assuming that other stuff is... Licorice, nibs. Licorice Twizzlers, Twizzler nibs. nibs there. Nibs. Twizzler nibs. Oh, I've never had the Maynards, and now I'm jealous. We have fuzzy peaches, and they have like sweet <laughs> berries and wine gums and everything else. Yeah, kind of a gummy, Yay. kind of a gummy. We also candy. have maple flavored bacon candy. <laughs> no, I don't have anything else for you guys. But right. I'm the kind of person whose mind is everywhere, and so I'll send you a message later when I realize, <laughs> like sure. a minute later, that I have a question for you. Yeah. No, and that's... so thank you for having me. This Thanks was very so much. Fun. This was awesome. And Before yeah, you was go, great. Uh, where can people find your stuff? Oh, yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at KSenopathy. And I will have to spell that because nobody knows how to spell it. <laughs> K-S-E-N-A-P-A-T-H-Y. Um, and same on Facebook. My public page is Coven Synopathy. It's got a blue check mark. The other one's my personal page, which is very boring. So you don't want that. <laughs> And then that my the writing I just on Forbes. Just Google me. I mean, yeah, Sweet. that's where I am. And I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, but I will not tell you my address. Because <laughs> creepy anti-GMO people out there who try oh, to find yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, so I wouldn't know it. Bad ones. All right. Well, go take care of your fake kids. <laughs> I will. Or not. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks you. so much. Care. Thank you. Bye-bye. And you're good. All right, so let's go to a commercial quick. If you like what we're doing and want to help us keep the lights on, go become a patron at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. You can hear the bonus half hour that we record every episode and get a shout out when you support the show. Become a patron for just a dollar an episode at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. 
Or you can support the show by ordering a t-shirt, mug or other gear from our store at cafepress.ca forward slash brainstorm podcast gear. If you can't afford to become a patron or buy gear, then why not give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Stitcher? Every rating makes it easier for people to find us. Thanks for your support. We are given one life full of billions of small and large decisions to be somebody, to change, to be kind, to give hope, to become a better person and to leave a lasting impact on this planet. It is a decision to be made every single day while your heart is still beating. We've made our decision. Absence of clothing. Atheist and science-based apparel and merchandise. Donating 50% of our profits to charity. Look good and feel good without God. Check us out at absenceofclothing.com and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest for discount codes and other sweet swag. Use the code BRAINSTORM at absenceofclothing.com and get 10% off. What's up, Secular Minorities? This is Uber47, host of the Secular Barbershop Podcast, a podcast run by a secularist of color for secularists of all colors. I invite you to come in, relax, and listen in on a conversation that changes every week in a secular environment. And, like every barbershop, walk-ins are welcome. Talk to you soon. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm actually. I think I'm going to try from now on to be more. Um, let's say congenial, friendly, <laughs> nice during the interview part. That and is what the if, word. I think that is the word you're looking okay. for. I'm just not sure you know what it means. Right. <laughs> um, and then congenial? for the rest of the show, I'll, I'll just be myself. Okay. But I'll be nice for the interview. We're nice for the guests. And then you'll switch it back on. Yeah, you listeners. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be nice for you. Back to, back to your regularly scheduled asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to try this out. I'm going to read off this thing that I wrote. It's like a rant, but I don't feel like a, I'm good at ranting in person. You, so you got to channel, I'll channel, I'll channel inner, my rage. Your inner but, uh, uh, Lewis Black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretend like the whole day you didn't get to lift weights and I made fun of you for it all day. Well, part of that's true. Yeah, he doesn't have to pretend for no, that. No, I didn't say anything. I actually, <laughs> you, you, you're you like, didn't lift today, sad face, or whatever. That's 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 the Yo, voice Jim. I use for Corey. My head. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to make fun of him. And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to And now you're regularly scheduled as well. And now I'm doing it in person. <laughs> There now, now you can feel rage. Now I can feel rage. And, yeah, no. Except, except, except my opinion means nothing yeah, to you. If so. only, if only I cared. <laughs> All my feeling got hurt. <laughs> okay. So last week, Justin Trudeau and his government announced a carbon tax minimum benchmark for the provinces of Canada to reach and hopefully exceed. This led to outrage among conservative Canadians, but none more than Brad Wall and his SAS party supporters. Many of these people are still climate change deniers. They say things like CO2 isn't a pollutant or Canada only produces 1.6% of the world's CO2 emissions. Some are still of the opinion that climate change and that is... Oh, what the hell? (laughs) Still of the opinion that climate change and all that we're seeing is normal. All the changes that we're seeing is normal. It occurs to me that somehow every conservative in Canada must be a climate expert and that they should all take their research and findings to the IPCC and get the appropriate media attention. They've clearly found something that the vast majority of climate scientists haven't. I know they all have their numbers. They've, I already mentioned the Canada's CO2 contribution being only 1.6% of emissions. And they all have their cherry-picked stats from a select number of years And they all have their arguments about the parts per million in the atmosphere. And they have one or two self-proclaimed experts to back them up. There are even a couple organizations with the word science in their name to lend credibility to all of their data. If that sounds familiar, then you've probably been paying attention to the evolution debate that's going on with creationists. I'm not an expert. 
just like many people who have an opinion about this. But this is why I listen to people who are. And right now the scientific consensus is that climate change is real, is happening, and is caused by human use of fossil fuels. The only number that matters to me as a layman is 97%. That's 97% of climate research points at and agrees with the conclusion that burning fossil fuels by humans is the main cause of climate change and that it needs to be addressed by at least reduction in emissions and, if possible, a removal of already present emissions from the atmosphere. It's important to not to note that this is not just some poll taken by a bunch of scientists. This is not merely their opinions, though there have been polls done and those numbers exceed 97%. This is a consensus of the real data and research. This is enough to demonstrate that beyond a shadow of doubt, a shadow of a doubt climate change is real and man-caused. If you have a better plan than a carbon tax, then point it out. If you have a solution, then fill society in. If you're going to keep denying that we're polluting, if you're going to keep spreading lies propagated by the fossil fuel industry and their non-scientists, hired experts, then shut the fuck up and let the rest of us try to solve the problem. (laughs) Uh, One quick thing. That was good. (laughs) Good good rap. (laughs) Thank you. So 1.5% of the carbon. 1.6. 1.6. We have 0.49% of the world's population. So <laughs> so we're all contributing far three times more. more than the average anyway. <laughs> yeah, so more fuck you, see. whoever said that. You're wrong. But I, I, <laughs> I do, I had a couple of d- discussions on this. You, you find people who think that this is not going far enough, and then you have people who are completely outraged that there's even any imposition of any sort of mitigation plan on on. Yeah. on like climate change right but and i think that that's the part of the rant that i kind of agreed with i was like if, if you have a solution like let's we're trying something right now yeah. like this then, is yeah th- this is like all right we'll let's tr- let us try this it's certainly not the perfect thing and it and it will not solve every single issue but, but, it's but something but it's, yeah. it's instead of you know <laughs> sitting on the couch eating cheetos we are trying something yes. and and so if it turns out not to work then I'm sure it'll get modified. Right. And it can be modified fairly quickly. If in a couple of years it seems like, oh, this is not really working as well as we thought, then we can always try something else or somewhat modify this the current carbon tax. But I, I think that this is a huge success in a sense that we're at least doing something. Like we're, we're, <laughs> it's we're, a step forward well, instead of not doing anything. Well, it's, it's, it's making it's, everybody have a conversation. And it's, and it's it also... Though? Is it though? Well, it's it's supposed to be. Everybody like, except for Brad Wall. We are here, but we're we're somewhat. I'd like to think a little bit more enlightened and force ourselves to think critically than a large percentage of the population. Well, think- it's definitely starting more of a conversation than having a, a federal government who denies climate change. Right. So that that yes. just shuts down the conversation That's true. altogether. That's true. Like, there's yep. no like oh. Should we do something about climate change? Oh, what's climate change? If you so fire, that's kind of- if you fire your scientists and and muzzle the science community, that gets rid of the problem. Yeah, and that may be a bit of an a bit of an exaggeration on what the previous government did. Like no, they, I don't they think so. yeah, a little well, but uh, maybe a, a bit mis misrepresentative of it. They didn't fire all their they scientists. didn't fire all the scientists. Yeah, the rest but, of it's true. Yeah, <laughs> they they did muzzle them, yes. and it was for like. And they a destroyed reasons, a large number but, of documents. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is is that change. there's the n- denial of it because they want hard, concrete. You know, this caused this to happen because they don't want to change how businesses run because that's where that's where this carbon tax is pissing everyone off. Oh, it's just another, you know, another way cash to, grab, yeah. another cash grab, and an already hurting you know sector, and you know and. Blah, blah, blah. But the funny thing with it is, is we, all those people that are fighting, you know, the different climate change, you know, policies and whatnot. What yeah. are they driving? Well, yeah, they're <laughs> wanting to drive the big ass fucking trucks. They're, yeah. You know, if we look at the history, then last, say, since 2008, we've had how many different economic crises? None of them caused by any of the any of the policies of, of uh, you know, environmental no. policies. Yeah, that's right. You know, despite the... Despite the doom and gloom, every time there is one of these policies, but environmental forward. policy yeah. doesn't hurt uh, the economics of the country. <laughs> no. Well, and, and uh, I was and I was uh, talking to somebody who was kind of against the carbon tax, but 
and the we were talking about like so the the money stays in Saskatchewan yep. and it stays in the respective yes. provinces. Yep. Yes. So Although originally if, that was what everyone thought well, it was just another going to be siphoned yeah. off to Ottawa. And if it is yeah. a money grab, okay, let's let the the province l- let them grab some money, but now it's on the provinces, okay, if you want to give this money back to the population, create some initiatives like if if you like start what BC did well if you yeah. start if you start a new let's just say uh, windmill you know power plant that doesn't like, burn coal. <laughs> yeah <laughs> then you you're going <laughs> you're going to create thousands of jobs yeah building this new infrastructure yeah. that'll be more environmentally friendly exactly. so now you just need to invest that money and then you can sort of give it back to the population but wind farms cause this this medical condition oh and, and have you seen all the birds they kill yeah, all fly the in? birds well, yeah well the yes. yeah there and recently uh just a wind farm got birds. shut down close to chaplin somewhere like it, it, oh, they, they, is had, that right? they had planned it and they had oh. they met all the requirements of being far enough away from all these lakes and, and nature reserves and the government <laughs> shut it down Jeez. and it's it seemed what? like the stupidest thing ever it, <laughs> windmills away from lakes but yet we're yeah. gonna run a fucking and, pipeline and, right and, behind yeah. no, but, yes. and, and guess what guess what that the, makes more sense the provincial <laughs> government you know what their excuse was it's gonna kill birds yeah, that's yeah. right. The yeah. one time they care about they give any a fuck l- about birds yeah. suddenly. Yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden, got to save the birds. Yeah. When when the NDP was in power, uh, the right, the in Saskatchewan was very pro nuclear power. Yes. Right up until why don't we <laughs> fucking have nuclear right up power? Until the right got in power, and then it's like. Wh- why would we do nuclear power? We have all this coal power. Yes. <laughs> well, because you guys fucking were saying that the NDP was holding it back. <laughs> Brad, Brad Wall, um, the fact that he just had a temper tantrum when he found out, <laughs> shoved his head yeah. in the sand, started screaming, and now he's threatening, threatening to sue. He's going to take a lawsuit to... I'm amazed he got his head into the sand while it was, while it was probably still up his ass. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think they just shoved his <laughs> head... I think That's they just buried him in sand. sand he must be really bendy. <laughs> All the yoga. <laughs> All the yes. yoga. He's oh, yes. steaming. Yeah. He's steaming. Uh, um, but yeah, now he's going to sue the federal government on behalf of Saskatchewan. I think that's 100% bullshit. I get so frustrated with Brad Wall <laughs> because every time he goes to a fucking environmental conference in Europe to to say, what about what about coal, you guys? What about, <laughs> what about fucking fossil fuels? You, that is not, why is he doing that? Because he's is, a fucking moron. Yeah, no, and then this happens and then he's like, wah, wah. I just call the fucking but, ambulance because it's just. Swinging from the nutsack but, of the like, oil company. But the thing is what pissed me off like if you're gonna the, like the back to the wind farm like that project was <laughs> yeah. already designed it was ready to, yeah. to get yeah. going and then you shut it down for no real reason even even some of my conservative farmer buddies they were like why would he do that like the it seems like an all-around yeah. good thing yeah, yeah. no it's and, just straight and it, up and you just know that there is some bigger thing that that got the shutdown. It was yeah. not about the birds. No. Let's no. just say. We'll end up using up all the wind. I spoke to somebody That's why who, we don't have solar power. I, I spoke to somebody who <laughs> only right. recently moved to this country. And I said, well, how do you like it so far? He's like, it's just, it's the wind. It's the wind. So we have a fuck We have too of much wind. anyway. We yeah. should start yeah. siphoning. Yeah. I, mean, I would be fine with not having it. wind anymore. Like, I, I'm completely fine with that. Yeah, that's right. Let somebody but, else you know, have how, No, we'll forever have wind because, Because you know, Alberta sucks. And Manitoba blows. Manitoba blows. Yeah. 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 If either, and if anybody out there listening. In Saskatchewan. If anybody's <laughs> listening from Alberta or Manitoba, wah. <laughs> I, there's people that I love in both Alberta and Manitoba, but and they suck and they blow. <laughs> Who sometimes, doesn't love people that suck and sometimes blow? Sometimes people right? in Saskatchewan suck and blow yeah. as well. Yeah. So sometimes simultaneously With vortex. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Because Saskatchewan's a vacuum. Wow, well, we went from a really good interview to this. Well, it I devolved. Think, I think I thought that rant good. was really good, though. Yeah, and, it was. And Thanks. It got me all fired up all over again about Bradwall because I was. Fuck fucking you, Bradwall. With it. <laughs> 
I just, I, I just I don't listening. like that he's having a child. <laughs> that would be awesome. He's having a Donald Trump esque tantrum about the fact that the, he does have small hands. He, <laughs> Hey, my hands are huge. But like his eyes, if you ever Little look at his eyes. eyes while he's talking, he just doesn't give a shit about I'm, what he's saying. I'm starting to think that you hate him as much as I do. I do. I mean, it I boils do. down. To I do. It's just. If, but if you think about it, it just, boils down to is that he got elected on, and when he came in, the oil prices were going up. The beginning of the unprecedented boom. Yeah. And that bubble is burst. So now he is going to scramble. He's like he's. He's like a meth addict that has to get that fix again. So he's out there. He's ready to turn tricks behind the garbage, behind the garbage yeah. bin, you know, to get that yeah, fix again. That's yeah. right. You know, because like as soon as that bubble popped, yeah. went from an unprecedented boom to shit storm of a fucking and then, deficit. Yeah. And then Notley got elected, so he's got no, but he's got no back in Alberta. That's yeah. right. Nobody's got his back. Okay. Let's go on to religious nuttery. Yeah, let's go on a All different right. rant. Uh, uh. Cornerstone, this might be new to some of you. Scripture says that even our righteous deeds are as filthy rags to God. So even the good things that you do, even things like feeding, feeding the hungry and, and clothing the poor and taking in widows and orphans, as nice as those things are, if not done from the place of obedience to and a relationship with God, are completely worthless and disgusting to God. If you're not daily walking in a place of relationship to God, then the news that we have to bring you is that you're on your way to hell right now. So what do we got? Holy fucking shit, you guys. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. <laughs> That's a good one. We need that as a bumper. <laughs> Holy, Holy fucking, fucking shit. shit. <laughs> Buckle yeah. up. Holy fucking shit. I said it twice. There. You have sound bites. <laughs> Watch so- your butt. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Tough Lego movie. Yes, that's right. Yes. Watch your butt. Or cover your butt. Cover your, cover butt. your, butt. your butt. That's from Jurassic Park. Yeah. So so my husband occasionally sends me tweets <laughs> and articles and stuff. He likes to, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes I get these fucking things in my Facebook Messenger. And this one was titled, Don't Waste Your Cancer. Written by a guy named John Piper. It's a precious resource. John Piper? John Piper. You okay? You okay? Mm, uh. Are you glad you saved yourself? Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. Have a fuzzy peach. Breathe. (sighs) Breathe. So so, uh, this was originally published in uh, 2006, by the looks of it, February 15th. And uh, he writes this blog post about, uh, yeah, don't waste your cancer. And this guy named David Pallison is is having he's he's adding his own reflections to John Piper's words the morning after receiving news that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And the ten main points, you know, he adds his own little words after the original thoughts. I don't know how detailed you guys want me to get, but Let's 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 start with number one. You will waste your cancer if you do not believe it is designed for you by God. God gave you cancer. God gave so, you cancer. So, so God causes cancer. I don't, I don't, I don't know if God this is a cancer. spoiler, but I have a question. Like, what is what does he mean by wasting your cancer? Like, what is I? That's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really. Is it like wasting money or, or wasting no, your time? No, I think your hate. I try, I tried to read the article and I couldn't get too far into it without being really mad. <laughs> well, just without thinking in my head, it's like it's, it's like what about two S and M guys just found religion and they yeah. just have to mask right. it so some he, way. What he's, what he's saying is, why waste the experience that you could be having here? Yeah. So why so by being like. Depressed and upset that you have cancer. So that's not wasting, you're it? wasting it. So oh. in, the, in the preamble, it you says cancer is it. not wasted when it is healed by God. He gets the glory, and that is why cancer exists. So not to pray for <laughs> healing may waste your cancer, if you're not but healing God heal it. is not oh. God's plan for so, everyone. So, so it's wasting the opportunity of being healed yes. potentially okay. by God. And there are many other ways to waste your cancer. I am praying for myself and for you that we will not waste this pain. So number two, wow. you will not waste your cancer if you believe it is a curse. You will waste your cancer. Sorry, if you believe it is a curse and not a gift. 
What? So if you think, fucking great, I have cancer. Great. <laughs> Just great. I have cancer. Well, you can't do it with that sarcastic Don't do that. Tone. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. And then a lot of God fucking. God will know. Like a cancer. Awesome. <laughs> cancer. Wee. I'm having a cancer party. Everybody come over to my house. You will waste your cancer if you seek comfort from your odds rather than from God. So if your prognosis is good, if you just have to have a little surgery, get that shit dug out of you, you're good, and you don't thank God, yeah, you're fucking wasting your cancer. What? We'll see. Oh. <laughs> God has a plan. I can, I can, see, I can see that, you, that, you, that you're definitely the Brad am- Wall amped thing really up here. Helped. Yeah. The Brad Wall thing really yeah, just, just, helped. <laughs> See, God has a plan. <laughs> Though I think I think this is worse than Brad Wall. Yeah, this I, I, is worse. I, yeah, there. Uh, it might be cumulative, uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's like c- c- kind of the ap- the appetizer. Brad Wall is the appetizer yeah. of this. Yeah. This is the meaty ten ounce steak goodness. God has a plan. God is omniscient. You have yes. to pray to God to change his mind on something he's already decided he's going to do. Yeah. And if you pray hard enough, he'll cure your cancer, and you got to thank him. Which he would have already been planning to do anyway. So, <laughs> pray unless and being unless he pointless. plans on not curing you, and then right. you're supposed but he's to... only planning on not curing you if you don't pray. Which no, he's no, going to no, decide not that you're says. not going to pray. Wait, wait not what see says. what number four says. You will waste your cancer if you refuse to think about death. We We're all mortal. die. We always think about death. <laughs> it's the think. nature of human life. Yeah. Ugh, it's just it's just disgusting to me. Like, I I don't understand. You will waste your cancer if you think that beating cancer. I'm using air quotes is a good thing for our listeners. Means staying alive rather than cherishing Christ. Is, is that That's, is that fuck this guy? That's exactly what that means. That's the actual meaning right? of beating cancer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't and and it like just there's doesn't ten, understand there's ten, what... of, ten of these points you will waste your cancer if you spend too much time reading about cancer and not enough time reading about god fuck so, this god fucking... god only has one book get, well <laughs> get how long can you read that <laughs> that's right don't know, don't go on the cyber or the google or anything like that <laughs> well, and, 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 and and we should clarify i don't know if our listeners know who John Piper is. So this is not this is not a fringe little guy <laughs> who just who just decided to to write like a bullshit article. This right. guy this guy has a huge following. Like he's he's, he's been around since yeah. I think the eighties. He's the like founder he's, and teacher of desiring yeah, God. Like, he, he's he's been around. He has like huge influence. Yeah. And so this is not this is not just like one whack job. The dude's important, air quotes. Uh, back to what Corey said. God's only written one book. Right? He's only got one book. Even George R. R. Martin's released another book. Yeah. Right? Hey. Although at this rate, <laughs> at this rate, we're we're gonna get a sequel to the 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 fourth book or fifth book to, even... to, to Lord of the to, to Game of Thrones, about the same time as we get Bible part two. <laughs> the second coming. The yes. second coming. Yeah. So Here the last three again. points of this article is really infuriating. You will waste your cancer <laughs> awesome. if go. you grieve as those who have no hope. Wait, 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 wait. Don't be wait. sad. So, no, no, no. So you're going to, you're wasting your cancer if if you think you can beat cancer. You're wasting your cancer if you think about death. Yes. No, if you don't. Or if you don't think about death. And then you, you what was this one? If you grieve, if you grieve as though who have those well, who have no hope. Well, right. I, ha- I have a suggestion for people. Like, if if you want to follow this, I think it's just better not to go to the doctor and never find out you have cancer. Yeah. One one yeah. morning you just do not wake up. Yeah. Like that's right. Because it, it, Fuck, because you're yes. not you're not supposed to think about cancer at all. It no. seems <laughs> yeah. not in a good or bad way. I. I'm yeah. seeing a lot and of parallels with Mother Teresa here. That's, well, that's what, yeah, wrong, right? that was the connection I was making too. I th- actually what I thought of was another was a Hitchens rant, not the Mother Teresa one. Oh, okay. The one when he was talking about, uh, I can't think of his name, but the guy that held his daughter in his basement for like 23 years and oh, okay. raped her and oh, had right. kids and all this. That and guy. That guy. And, and Hitchens, she's supposed to thank God. And she was supposed to thank God. And, you know, Ugh. that's what I was, I mean, that, that was a much darker rant than what this cancer thing was. Yes. But that's what popped into my head because it's the same it's that same mentality of no matter what you're suffering, 
trust in God, love God, you know. Yes. Think of nothing but God. God is, you know, it's like if God is a if God is an actual entity, dear dear God, he's a son, like a <laughs> the epitome of a psychopath. Yes. I mean, it's like he's yeah, I gave you cancer, worst. you're going to fucking die, but you got to love me still, right? Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. well, fuck you. <laughs> like what? Yes. <laughs> Well, and, and like you will waste your cancer if you treat sin as casually as before. Are your besetting sins as attractive as they were before you had cancer? If so, you're wasting your cancer. So if you take it seriously, you're fucked. If you don't take it seriously, you're fucked. You're fucked. Cancer you is designed about it, to destroy the appetite th- for sin. Yeah, you're so not supposed to want to sin anymore. Yeah, you don't want to sin after you die either. Last but not least, you will waste your cancer if you fail to use it as a means of witness to the truth and glory of Christ. There. <laughs> oh, that was a good Fuck ending. That guy. <laughs> I, Fuck I that guy. That's that a guy segment. Indeed. That needs to be a segment. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. I like that. That's, that, that should we be a were, I think we're slowly coming up with a few more segments here. Yeah. <laughs> a couple new yeah. ones. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that guy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We might have to go do a weekly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, ex- except we can't use that. guy. No, it's not gender neutral. Fuck they. Well, sometimes fuck guy they. can fuck be them. No, fuck them. Fuck person. this person. No, fuck they. this person. Yeah. yeah. Fuck this person. <laughs> that's That's all I have. I was livid when I heard this, you know. It just, yeah. So kids are supposed to be joyful when they get leukemia and have to lose their hair. God's plan. And needles and needles and. God's plan. Yes. <sighs> Don't question it. Don't indeed, eh? No. That's 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 <laughs> the problem with the world. Don't question it. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really sort of everything. Universe. Everything boils down to not critical thinking. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to me rant. <laughs> <laughs> Got that off her chest. Oh, yeah. That was nice. Thanks. Okay. So I think we're kind of uh, behind here. So we're going to go to a music break. So I'm going to end this segment. Uh, for live listeners and patrons, you can enjoy the next few minutes, and then we'll be back. For regular feed subscribers, this is where we'll end the Skeptic Studio. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe on iTunes or Google, or Google Play or some other podcatcher, and check out the show notes at theskepticstudio.com. We'll have the Shift to Reason radio for you next week. Reason. 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 We have, we have European <laughs> reasoning. Reason. 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 If Raison. you can't wait, oh, then listen live at <laughs> spreaker.com slash show <laughs> slash brainstorm dash podcast, <laughs> or go become a patron at <laughs> patreon.com <laughs> slash brainstorm podcast. <laughs> we have a new iTunes review. Oh. Uh, Back okay. to the podcast. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's hear Sweet. it, Corey. From Atheist Mom, she gave us five stars on Thanks, the Canadian Mom. store. So she's Atheist from Canada. Atheist Mom. Thanks, Atheist Mom. Mom. What a fun bunch. I love how they are so skeptical and willing to change their views based on evidence. Woo. So that's a, that's a pretty that's good a, that's endorsement. Pretty, that's, I feel good yeah, about that's that. That's pretty as ringing an endorsement as you can really hope for. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I had some back and forth with listeners after the last episode uh, on Twitter, and everybody thought it seemed was pretty funny. Sweet, it was a lot of fun. It's all about the dead baby jokes. Yeah, apparently, yeah. which apparently. brings me to our listener emails. Will sent an email letting us know that the dead baby jokes were not over the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're so I, I would funny. have to disagree with him. <laughs> that, that, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> but we're so funny that he got a headache and almost blacked out because he couldn't breathe from laughing so, so hard. So thanks to Will, we're going to introduce a new segment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. In, in which I will not take part. <laughs> he, he also sent a Leo diagram. and I will be in the deprivation tank. <laughs> yeah. Two floors <laughs> the, down. The, the, the shit. The shit tank. He also shit sent tank. a diagram of his cubicle <laughs> environment. We were talking about that right. the one episode. And uh, I think just by looking at it that he must at least be disturbing six people when he listens to the show. Good. Six. Maybe even more. That's a pretty good number. Yeah. Wow. So in other words, okay. we got one guy that likes us 
and six to seven people that probably fucking hate it. Yeah. That, that's probably a fairly fair demographic, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's, probably, that's probably pretty, pretty damn I accurate. So too, yeah. I think so, too. It, it, that means we're doing something right. Yep, exactly. I mean, it's, it's a pretty small sample size. We should actually see how many people will actually hate us and we piss off. Because <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, I don't, I don't mind you, making the phone calls. So I just grab a phone book. So... so we should just say that if people hate us, they should send us an email letting us know. That's right. Yeah, that we be, deserve that, hate that, mail. That'd be great. I would love some hate and, mail. And if you really hate us, you know, become a patron. <laughs> yeah, shit. And listen to us every week. Yeah, listen to us every, every single week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we also got a brother uh, a message from Brother Brewer uh, of the Skeptics Brew Pub podcast mm, mm-hmm. uh, talking about the tumor research article we were discussing, which oh. I think was Angela's article last time. Uh, and I'm he, drawing a blank. That was a long one. He's right? just he's just suggesting that we uh, we get Lauren Ud. I hope I said that right. How's it spelled? On U D H E. U D H U D, aka the biology babe. Smith. Udi. Udi. I'd say Udi. Okay, Udi. Lauren Udi on, aka the biology babe. Uh. He said he in- interviewed her, her on his show, and she's a great guest. So I'll send idea. her an email. And yeah, we should probably have Mr. Brewer. Yeah, well, we could definitely plug his show. Yeah. If maybe he, he'll uh, listen. And, if he, and, uh, uh, if he has a it. promo, by all means, send yeah. it over our way. We, Do we don't have anybody guys... paying for advertising, so we might as well do it for free. <laughs> do, does anybody have so poor. things to plug? Back in a back in a day when we ate oh, condiment sandwiches, like when we went for supper, <laughs> like when we went for supper. All right, so you can find our stuff at facebook.com slash brainstorm podcast, twitter.com slash brainstorm pod, or brainstormblog.net or the brainstorm podcast.com, and so on and so forth. Uh, Angela, what do you got? Just the usual. I got to take a f- some photos of a band last night. That was fun. That's cool. Tequila Mockingbird, local nice. cover band. Right at on. the Erdford Erdful Dodger. Erdford Dodger. Erdful Dodger. You were there last night? I was, yeah. I was there last night. Were you? Yeah, there's like a, an executive party for the... Yeah, we were there before before everything what? got going. We were there during soundtrack and Where stuff. Where the hell were you? I was like in the where the buffet ended up being. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't like near the front, probably. So I don't know. Because uh, we, I was. I the got front. there just after seven, and we, <laughs> we left. I think at about that. nine. Oh, I got there just after you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, because yeah. we went into the library because there's lots of cool books and furniture there yeah, that yeah. is a really there, good backdrop there was a, for photos. A nice. lot of money in that room later on at night. A was lot there of money? A lot of big executives. Nice. Like Warner Music was there. Oh, oh my goodness. Um. Yeah, a few major players like. Wow. That. The same label that Broken Social Scene is on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Continue. Don't say that on live radio. <laughs> I didn't say we should. I said we could have. Oh. We have uh, probably five or six minutes before we're cut off of our three hours. Seven tonight. minutes. Seven, Seven and a half. minutes. So what else you got? Just, just photography. That's all. So your usual links. I have a bunch here. Just my Facebook page is Angela and stuff. That's That's me. Kate. And you can you can follow me or friend. She or likes stuff. I like stuff. She does the things. All the I do stuff. The things. All Renee, the creative stuff. You do the things. No. no. <laughs> do you make a good pretzel? <laughs> you make good pretzels. <laughs> Renee I'm does nothing. To. None of the things. <laughs> I've been you toying with the idea of starting my own blog, but I haven't gotten past the pondering stage. Keep on, do it. Do it. <laughs> do it, man. Yeah. My own ranting and ravings. Yeah. You could start some good arguments, I'm sure. Leo, Leo got a haircut, as I well did. as other things, but not a real job. You have things. <laughs> well, I also cut my goatee, which made yeah, me so kind of sad. You look, you look like. 12. Why did it make you sad? Did, was it your choice, or was it not your well, choice? It, it was my choice. choice. Okay. Well, I, it's going to grow sad back. Sad after out. the fact. Well, it'll grow like, back. <laughs> it'll grow back. It was Science, like motherfucker. I'm going to cut this off. <laughs> Oh, no, I shouldn't have cut that off. I was like, I, I, I look so naked like this. <laughs> Is that what my face looks like? Yeah. Like, no, 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 let's cover it up. Let's cover it up. <laughs> Rogaine, Rogaine. 
Undo, undo. <laughs> Control Z. Control Damn it, Z. This is in the computer. All right, Gumby, what do you got? <laughs> Nothing. You have a new new Twitter. Yeah, and I don't remember my Twitter at all. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> I Twitter you, okay. all the time. Did you have one okay, before? So it's you have Ken a, Bone. No, no, it's... Uh, Ken Bone, yes. <laughs> it's actually a really Sass- clever skeptic. one. Sass Skeptic. 13, I think. Sass Skeptic. S-A-S-K-E-P-T-I-C. <laughs> so Saskatchewan Skeptic. All right. Sass And I have a million skeptic. things. No, not Sass Skeptic. Sass Skeptic. Sass Skeptic. Sass Skeptic? Sass Skeptic. Gotcha. I scribbled out the first SK. Yeah, that's right. He's so clever. I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> Five minutes and counting. Oh! If I, what I will plug is I am okay. looking for anybody that wants to help with something. Uh, I am trying to launch uh, my nonprofit. Multi-level marketing? <laughs> no. Well, actually, that <laughs> just occurred to me. That's nonprofit for everybody else. Pyramid scheme. No. We, we uh, get it's, it it's a nonprofit I want to start where it's actually a, a grocery chain that uh, all proceeds at the grocery store go to the uh, to putting food in all the shelters and all of the. Um, okay, so once you start it, and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll add links. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody that wants to help, just email the podcast. Corey will send it. Through. Yeah, that's right. I will forward it on. There you go. Sweet. Okay. I have a Facebook page, The Hardcore Skeptic. I have... He doesn't have any friends, though. I have lots friend. of friends. I have infinite friends. All the friends. You don't even know. I have all the friends. <laughs> Four minutes. All the best friends. Everything else is about the podcast, Brainstorm Podcast, uh, skepticstudio.com, shifttoreason.com, or shifttoreasonradio.com. Uh, How many so, websites do you we have as many URLs as we need. <laughs> <laughs> we have all the URLs. <laughs> so the rude. URLs. Let's hit that intro, <laughs> outro music, and I'll get through this before he Corey, interrupts me. Corey does have little hands, though. Yeah. So that's where we're going to end the episode. <laughs> before we go, I want to make sure to mention the website, brainstormblog.net. We have comprehensive show notes, including any notes that I made during regarding stories and any notes that the rest of the crew gives me for their stories. Uh, shift to Reason updates. No Shift to Reason in 2017. The vote has been cast. We are not doing it till 2018. Uh, you can get bonus content, full-length ad-free episodes, and other bonuses by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast, just like Daryl, Will, Rob, Nathan, Destin, and now, well, and George and Stephanie, because they were new last week. You can join us for the next live broadcast by following us on Spreaker. Just enter the Brainstorm Podcast into Spreaker search bar, search bar, or you can go to our website, brainstormblog.net, and check out the live show page and the upcoming events page. The AB Secular Conference starts tomorrow. If you aren't already, if you don't already have your tickets, I think that you can still get them. I hope that you're going and that you have a good time. Uh, remember to rate us and rate a review on iTunes or Stitcher and hit that subscribe button. If you have leave a review, then let us know and remember to tell us where you're from. So we know which store to look in. Thanks Dave for our intro music. Thanks to Alex Kepper Murdoch for doing the voiceover for the intro and some of our ads. And thank you to Ra- Jason Camo for the outro music. You can find his stuff at a lost state of mind.com. All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. For more information on SoCan, you can check out the music license on info on our website, brainstormblog.net. T-shirts, mugs, and other cool shit is available at cafepress.ca slash brainstormpodcastgear. We love to hear from our listeners, so send us email, mail at brainstormblog.net, or go to our website and hit that contact page. Also, hate mail. All the hate mail is good, too. It's probably all mine. <laughs> if you have a podcast or website and want a shout out or have a promo to play, let us know. Uh, thanks for listening and we'll see you in a couple weeks when we bring on our new crew crew member Lisa to see how she likes being a new member of the crew alright and that's it we're out
This is an opinion-based podcast. Each person on the podcast is responsible for their own opinions, and those opinions don't necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the panel. Any guests or anyone associated with the people on the podcast, such as spouses, partners, children, other family members, friends, or employers. No one person speaks for the podcast, with the possible exception of Corey, and he doesn't speak for anyone else on the show. The Brainstorm podcast does not represent the views of our sponsors. We just wanted to say thanks to everyone who listens to us, shares the show, gives us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, or supports us through Patreon and Gumroad. We don't have a lot of interaction sometimes with our listeners, but what we have had proves that we attract some of the best people around. Smart, kind, and cool. An audience truly worthy of the titles Hardcore and Woo Free. Thanks for helping us make the world a smarter place.